Good evening. Thank you once again for joining us. Tonight we have a slightly different format. You will notice that in a moment, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see why. As, as, as you know, the December 7th elections did not produce a clear winner. But without any doubt at all, uh, uh, Parliament has been transformed. Uh, these are really interesting times uh, for this country. And we thought tonight we would talk to two gentlemen from, 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 from the NPP and the, and the NDC. They will us get a sense of, of, of the way things have been and where we are going. As you know, we have a runoff coming within the next two weeks. And so we will we'll talk about it, get a sense of how they see things unfolding. Our guests are the, 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 the minority spokesperson on legal and constitutional affairs, uh, Nana Akufuado and the Honorable Minister for Communications, Mr. John Muhammad. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nana, these are uh, uh, very different times, in a sense. Uh, your party is, in many ways, suddenly the biggest party in Parliament. You must tell me what has happened. Oh, goodness. Well, that, that's like telling the, the whole history of the last decade. I think principally what has happened was that the message that we took to the country, the message that there was the time had come for us to change the direction, the policies, as well as the people who are in charge of the country. That message, I think, has had a very strong response from the Ghanaian people to the extent that when you put together all of those who stood on the message that there was a need to change the, the ruling party's hold on power, have together arrived at something like 55 to 56 percent of the electorate, the registered electorate, those who voted on the day. This is a major, major, major shift. It may, and it's like almost like an earthquake. If you remember that in 1996, President Rawlins won 57 percent of the vote on the first round, and that his successor, the leader of the NDC, has won barely 45 percent. But the NDC went into parliament with 130, went into the election holding on to 133 seats and are today 92 in the parliament. We were 61 at the beginning of this thing and are now 99 and almost certainly will be 100 by the time the new parliament is, is fully made up. And the other figures of the opposition have also an extra four seats. We see that an administer, at a parliament that was dominated by the ruling party is not dominated by the political forces in opposition to it. I think the fundamental thing that has happened is that the Ghanaian people have expressed their desire, their wish, to see a new deal in Ghana, to have a new beginning, to have a new administration, and to have new people running the affairs of the country. That was essentially the theme of our debate, of the theme of, of, of our election. As against the, the response of the ruling party, Initially, it was continuity. It became something continu change in continuity. At some stage or another, it changed yet again. I hear even uh, the propaganda secretary of the NDC was talking at one stage about also they standing for positive change. You could see that uh, uh, in the course of the debate, of the campaign, the ruling party's own position having to shift because it became absolutely clear that despite all the propaganda, despite what we have been told, by foreign commentators, what we had been told by the ruling party itself, that the economic progress that we had all sought had not in fact taken place, that the mass of the people had not had that improvement in their, in the, in their, in their lives that the propaganda suggested they should have had. And that ultimately is a matter that they responded to, that yeah. yes, there yeah. was a need for a new direction, yeah. because what had happened before yeah. had not worked. Let me see what John, John, you don't share that, do you? Mm, certainly not. <clears throat> um, well, I wouldn't say that um, uh, the seats that uh, MPP have won are just because their message went down well. I think that part of the seats they have got are seats that they have gained by default. Um, certainly, we realize that we made mistakes in some, in some constituencies, and that have cost us uh, those seats. They are at least eight clear constituencies that we shouldn't have lost under no circumstances. But certainly uh, because of the kinds of candidates that we put, put there, 
um, that probably cost us the election. That the people didn't want these candidates. The people didn't want these candidates, yeah. and they protested quite strongly. Mm -hmm. and, yet, you know, but, uh, and yet you insisted on keeping them. Yeah, that's the point. What happened was um, a certain process. It, it's not as if it happened just uh, any, anyhow. What happened was a process was put in place to identify candidates who should stand in the constituencies. Now, that process involved uh, administering a questionnaire to the constituency executive and then to uh, the, the leadership of the party in parliament to assess an incumbent MP's performance, both in the constituency and in parliament. And based on the results that came from this questionnaire, you know, it went to the National Executive Committee, and the National Executive Committee decided whether to retain a member of parliament or not to retain. Um, this was done quite objectively. But you would find that probably in some cases the constituency executives had not been too objective in filling out those forms. And so ultimately the kind of information that came up to the National Executive Committee was not a correct assessment of the candidate. Yeah. And so it's just in passing, at least eight constituencies we just threw away by the kinds of candidates that we put there. Um, a lot of people who probably ended up voting for other parties didn't vote for them because they really want, liked their message. <laughs> they did because they were uh, aggrieved about one thing or the other to do with uh, the uh, NDC. But let me say that um, with regards to uh, Nana's uh, comment about the economy, we went into these elections without any illusions that it was going to be a difficult election. Certainly the economy... Why? Why were you saying so? Uh, uh, because of the economic circumstances that uh, were prevailing from about the middle of 1999 till now. Mm -hmm. The economy has uh, not uh, been uh, very favorable and uh, economic circumstances have been tight. The CD uh, uh, lost value quite rapidly from 2007 to about 6,500. And so the economic circumstances were not the best. And so going into this election, we knew that it was going to be difficult. And certainly these uh, other parties uh, exploited it to the fullest they advantage. Have benefit, they have benefited from it. They have, I think so. And so in the event, I think that the party even did well that they uh, could not uh, win a first round victory, that we forced them into a runoff. I think that is um, a, 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 an evidence of the resilience of the NDC, that even then in the adverse economic circumstances we face, uh, coupled with some of the mistakes we made, they still couldn't win a first round victory. Mm. Given that these circumstances you refer to are not about to change immediately, what is what do you think will happen with the presidential runoff? Um, <clears throat> well, we have taken some corrective measures since the election took place, and that's why there's a bit of quiet on our front. Um, after the elections, what we did was to analyze the results and um, make a, a self-criticism and assessment of what had really gone wrong. And um, we have done that in all objectivity and, you know, uh, uh, truthfulness. And we are taking corrective measures to uh, uh, rectify some of the things that we didn't do very right. And I think that that is happening. And a lot of people who drifted from the party and voted for other parties or didn't go to vote at all, you know, are coming and saying that, look, we didn't come out to vote or we voted for some other parties and uh, this time around, yeah, we, we, we're going to come back and fully and uh, support the party. Can so we think that, that the chances David, are good. David, 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 that I think, I think, well, I'm not encouraged. I'm extremely encouraged by the analysis that Johnny is making here because that analysis seems to beg, shy away from the central issue. If the ruling party doesn't recognize that ultimately what the Ghanaian people have done is to reject their record, if they think that it's a matter of a few internal rearrangements and a few re-manipulations internally inside their party, that gives me a lot of confidence about what is going to happen in the second round because it strikes me that the fundamental issue which is at stake is escaping them. I've heard also Professor Mills giving the same explanation as, as I'm sure no doubt future Minister of Communications will be given where he to win. It's a question that we put the wrong people here. We put, ultimately, what the people are saying is that the record of government of this, of this administration is not one they want to continue. They gave power to a group of people to bring about an, a, a significant improvement in their living standard. They have not done so. What are the basic facts about our, our economy? These are coming from official quarters. 40% of our people live below the poverty line. 
average real wages in our country. And by that, I refer to what the normal wage can buy is today a quarter of what it was 30 years ago. Our economy is an identical position that it has been throughout the adult life of our nation. The country is still dependent on the export of primary products. 81% of the receipts, our foreign exchange receipts, come from the export of the three traditional products on which we have lived all this century, cocoa, gold, and timber. Clearly, an economy, an economy, a neo-colonial economy, a fragile primary producing economy, such as we still have, is not one capable of satisfying the aspirations of the broad masses of our people. If they don't understand that that is what the people are talking about, that the conditions of poverty which the vast majority find themselves in, they don't see any transformation of those circumstances under the leadership, under the policies that they have. I, for myself, I am comforted that the decision on the 28th of December will be an even more shattering one than what they received on the 7th of December. Because what the people are saying, so they're not, they're not saying that they're voting uh, uh, MPP without knowing many even of our own candidates that well because they're relatively, but they're saying that this particular party, this group of people, are the people who are saying the kinds of things that we want to hear vis-a-vis -vis the record of the incumbent. I said, I said that what, what it was a combination of things right. and that we did certain things wrong right. and the economic circumstances were adverse. Mm. I, I, I said so. Mm. But I think that when Nana spoke, he said that um, the, pop, the, pop, the populace or the electorate, you know, listened and said, these are people who are saying things we want to hear. And what they were doing was making promises to high heaven, promises that they know in their hearts they cannot realize within the four-year mandate. They know it. Mm -hmm. And just because they want to achieve political power, they've made all kinds of promises to the people. They've raised people's expectations so high, you know. And it's easy to make promises. I mean, if we were in opposition and said that we wanted to make promises, you could promise uh, the electorate the moon mm -hmm. and deceive them to vote for you. That is essentially what has happened. They promised them free health. They will abolish cash and carry. They will raise uh, salaries 100%. But they know they can't achieve these but, in, the, in the short to medium term. David, we can't allow the word deceive to pass by on this matter. Yeah. We've got, we have got, I know that they find it difficult to conceive of a Ghana that is prospering because they don't have the mechanics, the mechanics or the formula to produce that Ghanaian prosperity. So that the idea that people can come forward and say that the conditions of poverty that we are in today, there's nothing permanent, natural, or set, inch, set, unchangeable set, about certainly. it. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. That, that, that is the statement we're making. We're saying certainly. that the present conditions certainly. of poverty that the people are in are not things that are, n are either permanent or natural to Ghana. Yeah, we don't say they're better permanent Better management, either. better policies. Well, today, for instance, we're hearing that the decision that was made um, in, getting, um, in, 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 in getting money that was to be to revive the cocoa, the timber industries, those decisions that were made in the mid-80s as part of the ERP. We are hearing from their own ranks criticisms of that decision, that in fact, it may be that a different way of looking at the problems then may have produced a different kinds of policy. That's exactly the point we have been making. We're not, we've been making the, no, we certainly. after all certainly. are the believers in the private enterprise certainly. economy. Let me get George here. Yeah. Let me get George here. Certainly. Certainly. And, and therefore, when you're saying that you can, you can improve the conditions of the people, for somebody to turn around and say that you're making unrealistic promises and that therefore you're going to deceive Obviously the people. Don't share. That's of not course. Well, that, that, that I'm well, right. Let me hear With the greatest of respect no. to John. I yes. consider certainly, that, certainly. I consider that yeah. really rather infantile. Certainly when you go into elections, you, you tell the people what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not talking of just telling them what you want to do. We don't think that uh, poverty is a permanent thing in this country. And indeed, if you look at the statistics, Poverty is falling. It's not falling as fast as we would want it to. And we need to gear up to make sure that it falls faster. We have changed our economic program with, our donor, with the donor uh, community and our development partners from an enhanced structural adjustment facility to a poverty reduction and growth facility that targets reducing poverty in an aggressive way. 
Certainly, when we came, the objective conditions required that we invested heavily in restoring the social and economic infrastructure, and that is what we've been doing all these years. We've created a situation, a foundation, where this economy can take off by putting back the social infrastructure that had decayed completely. Now, with that kind of foundation, you can begin to look at improving the incomes of people and providing jobs for them. That is an objective condition. And we don't say poverty is going to be permanent in this country. But we're saying that in the short term, you cannot wave a magic wand and change everybody's circumstances. I would like to st I now, would what they have done is years. to let mm. all the, the dog chain sellers on the streets, the shoe shine boys, and everybody think that within the next one year, they're going to create 750,000 jobs, and all those uh, boys are going to get uh, jobs. And that's what I'm saying that making promises is easy. But you need to be a, a realist to make the kinds of assurances to the people that you can achieve. Certainly, they are not in the driving seat. They, know, they don't know what the actual state of uh, the economy is. And so to just sit down yeah, and say that, and I know, I know, I know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. Let's, let's, let's take it hypothetically. Let's take it hypothetically. Wait, wait, let's take it hypothetically. Just a minute. Are not no, 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 no. Let's take it. For us, I know, I know, I know what, I know what they're going to do. We have budget statements. I know what, I know what, I know what they're going to do. Setting out the economic facts of the situation. I know, let's take, let's take a short commercial break. Let me just say, let's take a short commercial break and then we'll come back to it. Welcome back. Mr. Mahama, what would you do differently to get the economy back on track? <clears throat> well, uh, bef before I begin to talk about that, I was just going to chip in, you know, what I think Nana and Co. would do if. No, if, no, I'd like you to tell me what they you want. would do. If they want. Because that's right. his boss's matter. Right. If yeah. they want. <clears throat> if, uh, if I, I know shortly after that happens, they'll come out and say, uh, Gentlemen, unfortunately, we didn't know the true state of the economy is worse than we so think that's it. that's what you're telling us, John. No. You say we don't no, know. No, no, that's what they're so going to say. we don't know the true and so facts. And so all the promises so. we made you, uh, unfortunately, we can't deliver immediately. Just keep your belts tightened in the medium to long term. We shall deliver on those but, promises. But tell me that's what, what they're going to do. Yeah, but tell me what but, you But, yeah, um, a lot of programs are in place already and are beginning to yield results. We put in the Gateway Program. We've, uh, we have the Free Zones Program. It's attracting investment into the free zones. Uh, we are, recently we cut the sword to set up a new cocoa processing plant that will process 60,000 60, tons of cocoa and increase the amount of cocoa that we are processing from about 20% to close to 35%. These are all programs that are in place. We intend to uh, tackle ag agriculture in uh, a new way that is uh, speeding up uh, irrigation uh, projects all over the country. Right now we have irrigation dams that we're setting up in uh, most of the agricultural areas of this country. At the, we have a program to uh, set up 30 more irrigation dams. That is to continue to move the percentage of our agriculture that is under controlled conditions like irri irrigation to a larger percentage rather than the present rain-fed conditions. There are programs in all sectors of the economy that are beginning to yield fruits. We think that one of the problems has been unemployment because there is a steady drift of people from the rural areas into the urban centers. And people are looking more for jobs in the formal economy than previously when they were employed in the informal economy. We intend to increase the rate of uh, economic growth. We've averaged 5% over the last several years. And the intention is to accelerate that growth to 8% with the intention that as the economy expands, it will create jobs. Often the temptation and what several of the opposition parties try to do is uh, to give out a program that seeks to say that they would create jobs artificially. I think that it's more natural to grow the economy and as the economy grows, it would create jobs and uh, get people uh, working. Mm. We have a lot of programs. It's mm. something that we're, we're, we're carrying out and are going to accelerate in the next four-year mandate. You know, it's interesting. As I listened to him, I, I mean, it was a bit of what he said. I thought, you don't disagree with that, do you? What are, what are, what are the things that, that, that you think are weaknesses in that approach? First of all, I, think, I mean, it's, it's refreshing to hear that, to hear the, the communicators of the regime now telling us that they're aware that the path that they had been on before, before wasn't satisfactory and that is now necessary We're not to saying move. That. Well, I said, that's uh, exactly what I said. We've had those programs well, that's in what, place that's already. That's what I understand. Okay. 
that 20 years, which is the, virtually the period of the PNDC and DC has been in power, it's virtually 20 years. That period was in other countries' lives enough to transform them from the economies that we have now. You talk about Malaysia or Taiwan. These are examples of the countries. That I'm talking about countries that began very much at our level of development, mm -hmm. who within a 20-year period moved in the case of Korea from 400 per capita mm -hmm. income, mm -hmm. which was Ghana, 60% mm -hmm. people in agriculture, like they were there, to economies where per capita incomes is now measured in terms of thousands of dollars. Dramatic transformation of their lives, the lives of the Malaysians who, who today were to seeking to emulate. How have they done it? They did it with one fundamental premise. You cannot develop an e your economy unless you give the producers, whether of agricultural products, whether of industrial products, of services, confidence in their ability to work, take their reward, pay their taxes, and get on with their lives. The government has not done The that. fundamental weakness of the Rawlins era is that that confidence that should be generated in the indigenous business circles, largely because of the kind of so-called revolutionary actions that were taken, has escaped them. Of course, when the president himself, at the beginning of his tenure of office as a constitutional leader, can get up on a political platform and say that important producers, Ghanaian producers of goods and services, ought, ought not to have their products patronized because they have different political allegiances than his own and that therefore their goods should be boycotted. You know that the kind of signals that is given to the private sector and therefore the response of the private sector to the various initiatives that have been tried continues to be sluggish. Sure, I think, case, let, let me finish, let me finish, David, <laughs> before that. I think that the fundamental difference, get away from all of the, the niceties of economic policies and the econometrics and the graphs and the 7% and the 4%, the fundamental difference that is going to be made with an MPP administration is the confidence that is going to be generated in the business community that at long last, a group of come into office who don't have an equivocal and an ambivalent attitude to private capital and to private business, who clearly support it, and don't support it on a selective basis. Somebody is a card-carrying member of the MPP, so even if he's not a particularly successful businessman, he should be helped. But an NDC fellow who's already got something good, solid going, who's therefore looking for the support that would allow him to go bigger. You say, oh no, this character is not a member of our party. So therefore, even if he's employing three, four, five hundred, six hundred people and, and, and helping the economy grow, you're not going to look favorably on him. You were looking for that once fundamental injection of confidence that people are there who have put their political career behind the idea of private sector development, not monkey socialists like my, my, good, friend, <laughs> John, my good friend Johnny, John, the, 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 he was, the one time Marxist of the 80s. Yeah. But we're talking about people <laughs> who have a strong and, 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 and principled belief in the private sector. You must tell and me. therefore, yep. can generate, because once that confidence, once that confidence is given that to the Ghanaian be, business, that'll be the signal. To the farmer, yep. that really there's an administration in place that is looking after their interests, that is determined to, pro to promote their interests. That is not just always a major difficulty I've had in the last 10 years. The language about business is always about foreign investment. Yes, our country needs foreign investment. Yes, there are areas of, of, of our economic activity, the capital goods sector, mining, which requires large sums of money, where yes, we, we require. But it would seem as if somehow or other, in the rhetoric, the whole idea of the indigenous businessman, the indigenous entrepreneur, male, female, those who are actually here putting goods and services together, somehow got lost. We intend right. to really push that. Right. And we think that right. if you look at the success stories in the world, whether it is Chile or... You have given examples of that. Let me get into it. Those are right. the reasons yeah. Yeah. for that success. Right. Yeah. John, let there's, there, there is a big issue there, and I want you to dwell more on the whole issue of, 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 uh, of, of business and uh, domestic, uh, domestic capital supporting local businessmen. Is that, is that something that, that, that you plan to work on as a, as a party? Because it seems to be a big issue. It's surprising. I mean, <clears throat> it's, it, it's wrong to take the 
policing function of government, you know, that people do business legitimately and malign government or mis mis misunderstand that to mean that government is not interested in growing the private sector. This government has a clear policy of putting the private sector in the forefront of the development of the economy. And we have stated that several times, and we have demonstrated it uh, physically. You know, Various facilities have been arranged for the private sector to enable them invest and grow. And uh, the, I'm sure AGI and PEF will be the first to ad admit that uh, this government has been very supportive. The government has spoken with the Association of Ghana Industries, with PEF, and uh, tried to find out what their problems are, find out how to resolve it. Often, the thinking is that uh, there's a problem with access to credit, like credit is the only problem. There are several problems that we need to resolve with regards to uh, the private sector, not only with regards to access to investment and credit, mm -hmm. but also in the general entrepreneurial training of the Ghanaian to manage a business. Mm -hmm. Several times, government has supported business and industry and found to its disappointment that the business fails to grow, it collapses not because government has not been supportive of it, but because there are other factors that have not been uh, uh, put right. Um, there is a natural tendency among Ghanaians to want to have a sole proprietorship to control their own business. So however big it grows, they try to retain a certain family stranglehold over the business. And certainly that doesn't help, even with re regards to accessing credit. If I was a banker and you came looking for credit and you were a sole proprietor, as against a company like Unilever, I would most likely give Unilever 10 billion and give you 3 billion because there's no guarantee that if you drop dead tomorrow, your business will continue to survive. But if Unilever uh, is chairman or, God forbid, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> if anything right, happened, yeah, yeah. Um, Unilever will continue to exist. So we need to look at things in a very comprehensive manner and not just mistake government's legitimate concern of ensuring that people do business legitimately Johnny, and what, mistake what, that as Johnny, what, a suppression of the private what, sector. Yeah. There are a lot of people in business. I'm in the communications industry. Yeah. Ghanaians are in the forefront of the information technology industry. They're coming and they're taking licenses. They're setting up uh, internet service provision services, data transmission. These guys don't know what's going on in the economy. The economy is, is growing, is expanding. People, Ghanaians are going into business and succeeding. And government is encouraging them to do so. Suddenly, we know that as Ghanaians uh, create wealth or get richer, the economy grows. And who would want to prevent that? Who would want to stop that? I'm going to make a simple point. I, I don't know what is the policing function that would affect a Kwabna Daku, for instance, who's, a, who's, who's an agro, agro industry, some of the most important elements of the, of the agro industry, a chicken farmer yeah, on a large he, scale. He's doing well. He is the <coughs> person whom the president stood and tell us that his goods should be boycotted. This is a man who's producing and exporting out of this country to the region and to the world, mm -hmm. a major industrialist in the agro-processing industry. He's, a, he's one of the people. We had a, uh, another man, a Pierre Menka, who's one of the, f the few people in an industry challenging the multinational corporations, an indigenous Ghanaian entrepreneur who was challenging the products of Unilever and the multinationals in Ghana and the soap industry. In most places in the world, he, would be the person that you would do your best to assist, even, I mean, to, to, to find a way of, of, of boosting his market share vis-a-vis -vis the multinational, who, after all, at the end of the day, whose investment decisions are controlled in London or in, in Amsterdam or in New York and not here in Accra. This is another figure who's the subject of, 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 of attack. You, Addison, who produces uh, paper products in, 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 in Takradi, is another. We, we have to understand this. There is absolutely no purpose in that language that continues to talk about people being thieves, that people are always on the wrong side of the law. And let's begin the language that is about encouraging creativity, encouraging enterprise, encouraging hard work. Simple hard work. Because a great deal of, of life's problems is really ourselves, not, not by any great genius, but that people are prepared to actually work hard. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about making examples of successes in our country. The Ghanaians who <coughs> succeed, people recognize them, whether they're in the world of business, in the arts, in the professions, whichever way it is, and say, yes, these are the role models we're after. We're after a Ghana whereby somebody can become a Kwabna Daku. That's the Ghana we're after. The way after a Ghana where somebody can be 
brilliant communication uh, minister. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I say it, I say it with a blowing off. I mean, we, we are on different sides, but I recognize the skills and the ability. Let's look at a place whereby we are saying to ourselves as a nation, we are going to encourage the best. We're going to make sure that those who have the ability, who have the opportunity, do what, as much as they can for this country. And, not, and leave behind this language which has that some people are the only people of integrity in this country. Only one party has men of integrity. And everybody else, somebody you don't know, you've met four years ago, is the only person who has, is a man of integrity in our country. Everybody else is a crook or a thief. That language has been extremely damaging you, you to our country. You could call country. yourselves men of integrity, <laughs> no, right? No, 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 no. no, but we're not, we're not involved in that language. Yeah, we're, we're, inter we're interested yeah. in performance. Yeah. 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 We're interested mm. in the people who mm. can perform. Mm. And what we are saying mm. is that when we come, because I think it will be not a question, as Donnie says, of if. I think it is when we come, which will be clear on the 28th of December. You are going to see a new tenor in the public discourse of our country. Because our thing is going to be about all Ghanaians who can assist in pushing and the, the Ghanaian ship through oh. these turbulent seas, that person is welcome on board the NPP bandwagon. So That's like, the language. Mm -hmm. And we're no longer going to have the language of, of thieves, of that people, mm -hmm. people no, are corrupt. Yeah, this, no, no, which no, is no. the language we've heard in Rawlings this time. Mm -hmm. as, if, yeah. as if somehow or other. People, he, people, I, I want, people I, I want are doing to, business. I want, I want you to respond people to are that. doing business in this country. They don't have a problem with the environment. They are doing business. They are uh, reaping on their investments. And there isn't a problem. It's unfortunate to use this to try to create an impression that the business community in this country is living in terror of government and all that. That certainly is not true. Businesses have grown under this government, probably far more uh, under this government than in the uh, history of this country. A lot of businesses are thriving. Ghanaians, mm. Ghanaians are doing well. You and can't see it grow much more than an, an NPP government, can you? Not necessarily, that's what you're saying. Yeah, well, I, I, think that, I think that this government has done well and that we have set the stage for moving into an accelerated uh, growth yeah. of the private sector. But perhaps these are personal positions. You know, in, in a sense, I mean, like the examples you gave, these are, honestly speaking, things that the president has said. Does that, does, does the party distance itself from that kind of position? Perhaps that's not the position of a party or of a mills. Well, um, <clears throat> I, I don't like the statements of a balloon to indicate that because the president said that, the business community is living in fear. That's the impression that uh, Ado is trying to create. Unfortunately, that is not, uh, fortunately, that is not the situation. Business is growing. We have come from a certain period, you know, coming from the PNDC era, you know, into the democratic uh, uh, period. We started an experiment in democracy again. Everybody has been learning since then. You cannot take certain statements that were made in a certain period, in a certain context, and use them to characterize the history of uh, the country since then till now. I think that is wrong. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll look forward to it. Take a short break. Welcome back. You know, I, now we have a parliament that, that, that has changed a lot. Um, can you see both parties work together? I mean, this, this environment, in a sense, is pretty uh, 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 tense, isn't it? I mean, the relationship between the NDC and the NPP. And at first, you've been pretty active in the last parliament. Can you see us overcome a lot of this tension? Oh, yes. I mean, definitely. I have no doubt about it, especially in the new circumstances of the country. Because after all, the, the political map of Ghana has been considerably redrawn almost uh, fundamentally. I definitely can. I think, uh, uh, first of all, the new style of government that is coming in. The new style of government that is coming in is no longer the, the confrontational style of government that we have had up till now. It is no longer a government that is going to be... Whether we, whether we had the uh, four mills, you know. I, I think that even, in, even, if, it, even if it's mills, clearly he, he's, he's talking a different language from the past. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Whether he will, in fact, be able to do something... When even it. before the runoff, you know, the minority leader in parliament says they're going to set up a commission to investigate there, there's nothing, 1979 and 31st there's no, December. There's nothing new about what the minority leader said. It has been, it's been a proposal that has been on the table. He's been in he said it in parliament last year. He has 
said it several times. The party, then you've, you've, the hit, party. you've hidden it never on your, on your campaign it. trail. Never you haven't said it. that you were going to inquire into 79 ne and uh, 81. Never, never hidden it. You haven't come out clearly with it. it. The 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 they, they've gone ahead yeah. to say they're going to reconcile the nation, they're going to heal the wounds and all that. And then just before the runoff, you come out and say, we're going to set up a body to investigate 79 and 81. That's not worrying. No, we, we think it's wrong. To compensate the victims. Well, That's and, what you're talking and what we're saying Unless is, what, no what, we're saying, what we're saying is, why target only that era? We're why target that only that era in our history? In that is what we're asking. We're talking about the living. There's no way you can reconcile. People are Dr. alive. Dr. People are alive today Dr. from to be Well, people are alive. No, no, no. Leave. I was coming to something. Leave Dr. Zankwa out. But I'm saying that people are alive today who suffered in 1966. Let's talk about how you can work together. A yeah. new style of government is coming in, which is going to get away from the confrontational style that we have been used to up to now. Definitely when Kufour comes in, there will be a different way of talking about the business of Ghana. And that in itself is going to make the difference. Because I believe that in this parliament and in the last parliament, there are many progressive elements in the MDC who were always a little bit, felt a little bit shackled by virtue of the powers that be in, in the executive and their attitude. I believe that now. Well, the same applied to your side. Not at all. Uh, we've always. We were our, there were, there were, there were always some good bills <laughs> that you opposed, like uh, the 2.5% VAT for education. They but opposed it. I'm yeah, sure there are people in the opposition who would have wanted to vote. We, we, put, we vote opposed for the VAT. But they, we opposed the VAT. They, they used the KIP. We opposed the VAT. Fundamentally. And so when let you come alone, to power, you're going to withdraw let, the VAT let, and replace let it with alone, the sales tax. Let, are you going to do that? Alone, uh, are you going to do that? Are you going to withdraw let, VAT let and replace it with the sales tax? Yet another increase. You have increase upon increase upon taxes. When the, the efficient use of, 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 of the revenues is not clear to many of us. What we, we are did, going to what do we did was to... But the what bottom, saying, what the bottom did, line is that parliament would be different. I'm saying. saying the parliament will mm. be different. Yeah. The opportunity for cooperation in that parliament are going to be enhanced. Yeah. Yeah. Parliament coming out as a watchdog body over the executive, its functions are going to be considerably strengthened. Yeah. We're not going to have a parliament that is going to hey, hey, the passage onto the Supreme Court of some of the most <laughs> undistinguished judges in our recent history, the Sapons and the rest of them, that is going to come to an end. We're now going to have a parliament. That's that libelous. Is, there's nothing libelous about <laughs> it. There's, not, there's surely, nothing libelous surely, about surely, it. Surely, you, <laughs> must, surely you, must, you, must, you must also see, John, a, a, a completely different party. Can you? I mean, yeah, certainly. I mean, there must be. I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I'm dwelling on, on, on the capacity of both parties to Together. I can understand the, the tension and all of this during election time, but I'm looking beyond that, really. Yeah, certain, certainly um, whoever wins this runoff is going to have to learn to work with other parties in parliament. Um, NPP has 99, NDC has 92, with four independents who essentially are uh, NDC. Um, don't, don't be so sure about that, Charlie. Well, well, well in, in most of those cases, they wanted to stand on NDC's ticket, and when they lost out to um, the losing candidates, they mm. decided to go independent. Okay. And so essentially, the NDC uh, people. Some campaign and then PNC, PNC has three members, and then CP has one. Um, certainly, no party uh, emerged with uh, more than 100. And if you know that you need 100 uh, 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 votes to pass most resolutions and a lot of the important business of parliament, then it means that parties are going to have to uh, rely on each other you know, to be able to pass. That's uh, a good bills. thing. Yeah, that's a good thing for democracy, I guess. And I think that we're going to learn to have to work together in the new parliament. Mm -hmm. well, you know, Nana, where, as, we, as, we get, as we get closer to the, uh, uh, the, the runoff, what can you see happen? Can you see us go through the election the same way we went through the first bit? Uh, or do you feel that there's a... Well, that, that must be, that must be the, the, the desire of the overwhelming majority of our people, mm -hmm. that we go to a second round, which is as peaceful as... as, as uh, I mean, it's it's quite, quite orderly. Eh? When quite orderly. Like I mean, uh, we will not know the full story as to how regular the, 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 the conduct was. It would appear at first blush that generally it was also regularly conducted. Um, obviously, we are in the middle of it. The stories about what happened in remote areas or in other areas, all that hasn't come out. But for the time being, I think the nation generally is satisfied that the thing went off reasonably well and is expecting the second one to do so. I'm disturbed by some phenomenon that is already occurring in between the runoff. For instance, there seems to be a deliberate attempt to stoke up ethnic and, 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 and tribal sensitivities in our country. Give me an example. 
No, what, 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 what is going on? People wearing MPP shirts and going into particular areas where they're so-called so -called, so -called aliens and causing trouble. We're going to throw you out. We're going to do this. The data graphic is headlining incidents that have occurred. Involving yeah, these are happening. Why, why, yeah, why would you say that the, people wearing NPP shirts? Because, and because I believe that some of it is, is You're suggesting no, 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 that it's no, no, a no, work no. of agent provocateur. No, That's no, exactly you, you what I'm saying. Say I'm saying this. I'm saying this. That's, 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 that's a problem with NPP. That's a problem with NPP. What is that problem? They blame everybody else for their faults. We're not blaming everybody else. So what is happening? We have not had some problem being in opposition. Some of our supporters, even though we need Some of our supporters have been harassed, you know, after... Uh, the December 7th results started coming out. Mm. In my own constituency, uh, several of the NPP supporters, known NPP supporters, went around uh, 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 telling people that, look, let the results come. If they are, if they are, if we come out victorious, you guys wow. are going to have a, have to run away from this. In your this constituency, town. which yes. you won, you won so convincingly. Yes, I I'm did. I'm surprised to hear I that. I did because certainly but, but I'm not. Talk, I live in a when, constituency when which has a very polyglot, a very cosmopolitan and diverse groups of people. We've got in Abuakwa, which is the biggest constituency in the eastern region. I think it is the most polyglot constituency probably in the entire nation. Everybody has substantial groups of people there, Kobos, Ives, uh, so-called Northerners. Well, at least All of one would have there. expected that None you of issue that is a happening. statement. We have said so. You'd we have a so. statement have and, so. and, and restrain Kufour, your, Kufour, restrain Kufour, your Kufour, support. This is just part Kufour of this whole tension thing that really will not get into. You know, perhaps it's just one of these things that comes with in the, you know, no in the exuberance of uh, the yeah, results and them winning certain seats. I believe that what is happening is a deliberate attempt by the by the ruling party, desperate as it is. We've even had a measure of the desperation when Isifu Ali goes on the radio uh, and the, uh, before uh, to say that Kufuor should be arrested for treason because he went on television to say, oh, well, what I'm saying, we, we yeah. as a measure, on, that's yeah, a measure, that's a measure. Racist, these yeah. are a measure of no, the desperation. No, 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 no. And these kind of things are extremely dangerous to the unity and the coherence of our country. I am saying this. That's what you'd like whatever to Whatever we, we are doing whatever we can on our part to make sure that our supporters conduct themselves in all legality. After all, they are on the verge of accomplishing one of the most historic events in Africa, not just in Ghanaian, but in African politics, to overthrow a regime as entrenched and as determined to hold on to power as the NDC, the people, just by a, a peaceful expression, can go to the ballot box, old ladies holding on to their stake, and determined that before they die, they will put some print the, uh, the, 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 the Arsenal sign. We are on the verge. Why would we want at this stage, having had such a long, long climb up this mountain, before December today, 7th. to come forward before, and then start misconducting ourselves? Before December 7th. We have no interest in it. Before we have no those who have an interest mm -hmm. in portraying us in a certain fashion, mm -hmm. in their desperation. And we're saying that that is not a good development for our country. That right. people should seek to stoke ethnic and tribal and even religious considerations right. for short-term right. political <laughs> right. No, go on. go on. Yeah, before December 7th, it was even difficult to wear an NDC shirt in Kumasi. It was difficult because you, you got heckled, you got... Uh, you can't even have no, no, NDC listen, MPP uh, listen. agents in the Volta region. Why it's not, not a question so of wearing t shirts no, 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 They are arrested by the police. So you're and suggesting they're arrested that and the brought results, to the results car by the start, IGP. The results start to come out, you know, and in the exuberance, your people go threatening people. And why would, you, not, why would you want to say that people would wear your party T-shirts mm. and go threatening people? Because, why why would you it, want because it didn't happen in the world. Gentlemen, let me ask you finally. It didn't happen in the heat of it. It happened days afterwards, and you have to ask yourself about the calculation. If something was happening on that Thursday night. One can understand it. Mm. But three, four, five days later is mm. before these stories start. You wonder, you wonder, you wonder about it the happened source because of these activities. It happened because your flag bearer yeah. went on TV and said that he thought he had won. Okay, and don't, created an impression okay. in the mind no, of Don't let's go into the detail. Let me just won. say, let me just say finally, finally, so we can wrap up this. Finally, are you prepared for whatever outcome there is? Do you feel that we can complete this process in a decent and civilized way, are you prepared for it, both of you, whatever the outcome of the election? The, the, the demand that we have a system of government in our country, which is dependent on the decision of people in the ballot box, that has been the historic purpose of the NDC, on the NPP and its forebears, to have a system of government in this country where those who are in control of government are under the control of those who are governed. That was Danko's statement when he launched the UGCC. 
and the 53-year history of this party has been an attempt to bring that into reality. We believe that that is the best system of government that a nation can have. So you will accept whatever and that outcome. therefore we have fought, and in this N NDC era, we have fought since 1992 to have an even electoral playing field, so that what and a transparent and fair one, so that whatever comes out of it. Who has agitated for an, a fair playing field more than the NPP? Each time we have been balked by the NDC, mm -hmm. they even take yes, the issue of yes. a thumbprint yes. to the court. A thumbprint yes. ID, which is no, no identification, yeah. is, is becomes an issue for them. You so know, the outcome, whatever the outcome you I'm do. saying, what we're saying is that we want, we, are, we hope, and we believe that the process on the 28th of December is going to be free, it is going to be fair, it is going to be transparent. Right. If it is, you can be sure that whatever the outcome of that result, the election will be we'll have, we'll be happy with. Because yeah. what we're, for us, yeah. the Stop. victory of the 28th of December is not a victory for the NPP. It's a victory for democracy and for Ghana. That's right. a very much more important victory than the victory of whoever is temporarily for mm. three or four years right. occupying the seat of power. Right. John. Well, I think that... The outcome. <coughs> I'm, I'm from the outcome. I think that I should um, tell this to uh, Mr. Kufo. He was on Vibe today, and they asked him, you know, if you'd accept the outcome. And he said that if things were normal, then he should emerge as mm. president. You know, well, yeah. that is a very dangerous mm. uh, opinion to hold, that you can only emerge as president if things are normal. Mm. I think I think it's wrong. They did this before December 7th, and he's repeating it again. What, what, what we about the, yeah. What's are going into the election. We're going mm. to give it our best shot, and right. we're confident that we can win victory. Yes. Yeah. And we um, would, would accept the results of the election. Whatever the result. If they are free, fair, and transparent. Thank you. Know, you same, same, same thing you said. Thank you, John. <laughs> Join us again next week. Good night.